Okay, folks, today we're going to talk about mounting a Holosun 407K to the Springfield Hellcat Pro. Spoiler alert. Yes, I, I bought the Springfield Hellcat Pro. I'll be doing some videos with it really soon, but today I wanted to go ahead and start with doing a little bit of an introduction uh, as far as the Red Dog goes. See, Springfield wants you to use their optic with this gun. What is it, the, the Hex Wasp? That's what the slide on the Hellcat Pro is cut and set up for. But you don't have to settle. You deserve more. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome. My name's Mike, and this is 360 Tactical Solutions. A no-nonsense and no BS place where we look at and review all manner of 2A related items. Feel free to leave a comment down below, hit that like and subscribe button. Every like, every sub, every comment, it shows the YouTube overlords that we want Second Amendment type content on this platform. To my hopefully friendly YouTube manual reviewer who's reviewing this video to decide its fate. This video is a simple installation video, that's it. The firearm in this video comes from the factory, set up to run an optic, and I am simply showing people how to install a high quality optic to this firearm. There will be no modifications in this video or directions on where you can purchase any firearms because, well, you know, YouTube ad policies. So now that we have our introductions out of the way, let's just dive right into the good stuff. I sat here for weeks watching dozens and dozens of videos on the Hellcat Pro. What I was trying to figure out was what is it going to take to mount a 407K to the Hellcat Pro. Mind you, this was during my research stage where I, I wasn't 100% sure I was gonna go ahead and invest in the Springfield. Pretty much every video that I managed to come across was one of two things. It was either a Hellcat Pro with no optic at all, or it had Springfield's native optic attached, the Hex Wasp. Now, if you've watched any of my videos before, you know that I have zero love for optics that are strictly uh, auto-adjust for their brightness. As far as I can tell, the Hex Wasp falls under that category, so you know how I feel about that. I want the option to decide what the brightness of my dot is going to be, and that's why I was looking at the 407K uh, for the Hellcat Pro. Another thing that makes me maybe a little apprehensive uh, about this Hex Wasp, pretty much every video that I managed to find uh, is a video where, how do I put this? Uh, it, it's somebody doing a review where they were sent a gun at no cost from Springfield. Most of these reviews seem more or less like they're just going over talking points uh, that were printed out and given to them by Springfield. I feel like there's a fair amount of bullshittery going on there. Um, I can't say for sure. I haven't asked, but when nine out of 10 videos all say the exact same thing, like almost word for word, well, something ain't right. Whatever. My mind is made up. I want the Hellcat Pro and I want to put a hollow sun on it. I know hollow sun has a pretty good track record for durability. It's the right size. It's got adjustable brightness. And it's got a fat, juicy dot that even these old man eyes can still see. Of course, again, Springfield wants you to purchase their optic. So the Hollow Sun isn't going to be a direct fit. Unfortunately, I couldn't find anybody doing a detailed video giving me a better idea of what I was going to be doing once I got this gun and optic combo. So what I did was I ordered the adapter plate from CNH Precision while I was waiting for the background check to clear for the Hellcat. So today, I'm gonna to show you two ways to mount either the Holosun 407K or the Trigicon RMR CC to your Springfield Hellcat Pro. Jesus Christ, that's a mouthful. Option one is gonna be an adapter plate from CNH Precision. These guys make the highest quality and most precise adapter plates in the business. They really do set the bar. Now I've heard and read plenty about adapter plates failing. Optics just flying off of slides at the range, never to be seen again. People want to do everything humanly possible to avoid using an adapter plate to avoid some of these issues. And yeah, honestly, I don't blame them. The problem is they put the blame on the optics plate itself, a thin piece of metal. That thin piece of metal is the reason that your optic came off and launched into orbit at the range. Let's get my perspective on that out of the way before we proceed. 
All of us know that you need to use Threadlocker on screws to stop them from backing out. If they do start backing out, hopefully you've marked the screw heads, so at least visually you have a point of reference and you know that they've moved. We all know there's actual torque specifications for the screws when installing a red dot. It's not just, you know, hand tighten it uh, and then crank that sucker down. What are you using to set the torque on those screws? Do you have one of these fix-it stick uh, torque limiters? My guess is probably not. If you're using thread locker and those screws are over torqued, it doesn't matter if you are using an adapter plate or if your optic is a direct mill. Let's face it, the clock is ticking. Expect to shear off those mounting screws down the road at some point. It's going to happen. If you're using generic length screws, if they are not long enough, if you're not getting enough thread contract into the slide, guess what? That's an issue too. It's going to fail. There are many things that can go wrong when you mount an optic to a slide uh, with screws, especially Torx. I freaking hate Torx. If it is done correctly though, it should not matter if it is a direct milled slide or if you're using an adapter plate. Now the Hellcat Pro slide has four guide posts milled into it. They are quarter circles, which is weird, but whatever. That's Springfield's little system. The adapter plate from CNH sits right over the top. In the front of the adapter plate, it's got two half circles that are guide posts that lock into place in the bottom of your optic, whether it is the hollow sun or the trigicon. One thing to note is that the guide posts on that plate are just slightly larger than the ones that are milled into the slide. It's not a huge difference, but it is a difference. That's something that I'm going to backtrack to once we start talking about option two, but since we're talking about guideposts, there is a difference in size between uh, what the hollow sun is set up for and what the Springfield is set up for. The adapter plate itself measures 0.45 inches. And I'm no machinist, so please don't break my balls about terminology with this stuff. For those of you who need a point of reference, pull your debit card out of your wallet, uh, take a business card and put on top of it, and the CNH Precision adapter plate is a little bit more thin than that would be. We'll roll some close-up footage of the optic with the slide in here, but just as point of reference, uh, we're talking about just slightly thicker uh, than a credit card. And no, a credit card's thickness doesn't change your co-witness that much, to be perfectly honest. It's not enough to really notice. Now, when you order an adapter plate from CNH, one of the cool things that they do is they send off the mounting hardware that you need. They're screws that are cut the exact length that you need. This is important because when you buy a red dot, the screws that they send, they're generic. See, Hollow Sun, Trigicon, they've got no idea what you're going to put that red dot on. They don't know how deep the holes are threaded that it's going to be screwed into. They have no idea whether or not you're using an adapter plate. They are completely clueless. It's not their job to know what you're using their product on. Here's your $400 red dot uh, with some generic ass screws. Good luck. No, with CNH, you get your adapter plate and then you get a set of screws that are going to be the exact length that you need for the gun you're putting it on. So then all you have to do is use a little thread locker and torque the screws down to specification and you shouldn't have any problems. Now, a lot of people are gonna skip right past the idea of using any type of adapter plate. They're gonna go for the more permanent option, mounting option number two. And that's to remove the two rear lugs that I took the liberty of marking with some blue marker just to make them easier to see. 10 minutes with a file, couple of dabs of spray paint, and I could be ready to direct mount this optic to the slide. I don't personally recommend that. Sure, a lot of people have done it, and a lot of people will do it, but if you're considering it, I wanna give you my perspective so that hopefully I can sway you to decide against it and to go towards using an adapter plate instead. 
first point that I would like to make is that when you remove those rear lugs and direct mount your Hollow Sun to the Hellcat Pro, you're still using those generic ass screws that came with the red dot. Of course, you aren't using an adapter plate, so it's not like they're going to be too short. They're actually going to be probably a little on the long side. Are they going to be too long? I don't know. I didn't design the gun. I don't know if long-term usage is going to create any issues. One of the screw holes, if you look down inside of it, you can see a spring in there. I don't know. I don't like the idea of using a generic length screw uh, on a slide with my optic. I just don't. Also, I'm not a machinist, so I would rather uh, leave that judgment up to somebody who's a professional like CNH. What I can tell you is that I understand the value of using the right length fastener for the job. Second point I'm going to make is more or less doubling back to the topic of the guide posts. Those little quarter circles in the front. I have a full size RMR as well as the 407K here uh, to use as examples. Both of these optics have holes or recesses in the front side of them. Those holes are supposed to coincide or line up with those guide posts. It's actually a pretty simple system. Now, my day job, I work in a body shop, and you see this a lot with the logos or badges on cars. Oftentimes, they're held in place with some double-sided tape, and then there will be a post on the back side that coincides with a hole in the body panel. Now, what that does is that helps you get it lined up, and it helps you make sure that it's straight and you don't get a lot of movement uh, with those logos. These optics are made to have four points of contact. Two points of contact are in the front, the guide posts that go up uh, that the optic sits on. The other two points of contact are going to be in the rear. That's the two screws. That's why the CNH adapter plate has the half circles built into the front side of it. So it still has those two points of contact in the front. They help stabilize the optic itself. It's not just the two screws uh, helping the optic hold on for dear life. If all you were using is the two screws, what can happen is the two screws can back out ever so slightly, and at that point, the optic can actually move back and forth, making you lose zero and or shearing off screws and launching your optic into space. You need those four points of contact. That's how it's designed. Now, the reason that I bring this up is because those two quarter circles that are milled into the slide of the Hellcat Pro, they are smaller than what's required for either the Trigicon RMRCC or the Holosun 407K. Quite a bit smaller. We're talking hot dog down a hallway, if that helps you with a visual representation. That's what you're relying on to stabilize your several hundred dollar optic onto the slide of your Hellcat Pro. It doesn't take a degree in physics to understand that relying on just the two screws going down through the top of the optic is insufficient at holding and stabilizing your optic. Now, I wanna say I have no monetary interest in how you mount your optic to your Springfield Hellcat Pro or any other firearm for that matter. I don't make a dime if you buy an adapter plate from CNH or anybody else. We all want the same thing. We want a fast, reliable, accurate, and easy to use aiming system for our concealed carry pistols. That being said, I think we need to move past the blanket statement uh, that adapter plates are bad. What we need to do is go with the best option at hand. I would love it if every manufacturer would sit down and agree to a standard mounting platform for red dots. After all, a direct mount is the best mount. Trigicon is basically the standard, so why wouldn't every red dot use that mounting footprint and every slide be cut with it? You know, the problem with that is that if that were the case, you and I, we would have options. We wouldn't be stuck or coerced into using something like the Hex Wasp on our new gun. No, we would be able to use whatever optic that we wanted. We could then mount it direct to the slide with no adapter plates or you know, worrying about a thin piece of metal that's going to fail. Now imagine how many optic sales the companies like Springfield would lose uh, if that were the case. They want you to use their proprietary red dots. Yeah, in a perfect world, I wouldn't use an adapter plate. 
Also, in a perfect world, I wouldn't have to grab my concealed carry pistol uh, just to go to the grocery store and get ice cream for my kids or to stop and put gas in my car. This isn't a perfect world, that's for damn sure. So I'm gonna set myself up for success and that means starting with a pistol that suits me. It's gonna be comfortable in my hand. Ergonomically, it's gonna feel natural to me. I'm gonna use a sighting system that is fast and easy to use and for me, that's a red dot. I'm gonna use a red dot that I trust and that has the functions and features that I need, the functions and features that are important to me. I'm going to attach that red dot in the most secure fashion possible, considering the dot and pistol combination that I've chosen. Every instance, every person, and every piece of equipment is going to be different. In this instance, with the Hellcat Pro, the best possible way to mount an optic is an adapter plate, and the only adapter plate for me is going to be the ones from CNH Precision. Now, if you like and trust the Hex Wasp, that's fine. If you trust making the changes necessary to go ahead and direct mount something like the Hollow Sun or the Trijicon uh, to your Hellcat Pro, that's fine too. There's no need for debate because for you, that works. This is just my perspective. And these are just my thoughts. And who knows, somebody else may find my perspective helpful when it comes to making the decision on what they want to do for their personal needs. Now, hopefully, those of you that were looking for some information on alternative red dots to use with the Hellcat Pro have found what you're looking for. As far as my full review on the Hellcat Pro, well, it's coming soon. Ammo prices are starting to come down, but I want to make sure I get enough rounds through this gun uh, before I do a full review, uh, just to make sure that I'm not missing anything. So that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. Stay safe, and I will see you back here soon.